All right, this lesson we're talking about conditional probability. So we're discussing the probability of an event happening given that a prior event has happened. So we want to know the probability of event B given that A has already happened. And there's two different scenarios in which this occurs. There's one where we have the data, meaning like we know the different choices, we know how many people picked a certain choice, and we have raw data. But then we also have these... Uh, real-life scenarios, like in number one here on the worksheet, that talks about studying for a test and passing a test. And we don't have all the data, and we don't have uh, the study. All we have are these numbers that just appear, 17 out of 20 and 15 out of 16. So when we do that, we have a formula that we use uh, to help us figure out the probability of those events happening. It's sort of like this. So if I want to know the probability of event B... Right, so if I want the probability of event B, I have to know the probability of event A times the probability of event B over the probability of event A. So essentially what I'm saying is if I know what A and B are, and then I can divide that by A, the A's cancel out, and I'm left with the probability of B. Okay, so there's a formula that we use to do that, Let's see if it writes here. Okay, there we go. The probability of B given A equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. So the information sometimes will give us the probability of both events happening and the probability of one of the events, and we have to figure out the missing piece. So essentially there's three variables. We'll know two of them. We need to figure out which one we need. So in this scenario, Andrea is a very good student. The probability that she studies and passes her math test is 17 out of 20. So looking at that sentence, again, I'm going to underline it here. So that she studies and passes. So it's the probability of A and B, event A being that she studies, and event B being that she passes. And so we know that's 17 out of 20. So the probability of event A and B is 17 over 20. Now, the second part below, let's read the next sentence. The probability that Andrea studies is 15 out of 16. So, good job, Andrea. We know that you're probably going to study. All right, so that part is event A. So we're going to divide 17 over 20 divided by the probability of A, which is 15 out of 16. So I know two of my variables, so what I'm trying to find is the probability of event B given A. All right, so we want to find out if she, she'll pass her math test given that she has studied. So that's the variable we're finding. Now, I hate compound fractions, so fractions divided by another fraction. That's confusing. So let's go ahead and write it a little bit differently. We can write it 17 over 20 divided by 15 over 16. Write it sideways. And remember, you can uh, look at this, and we don't like doing division with fractions. We can change it to multiplication. So we change the symbol to multiplication, but the second fraction, we take the reciprocal. So instead of 17 over 20 divided by 15 over 16, we're going to make it 17 over 20 divided times 16 over 15. So I can see that I can, and with fractions, you can cross, uh, cross reduce. So 16 and 20, 4 goes into both of those. So 4 goes in 16 4 times, 4 goes in the 25 times, and with fraction, multiply straight across, 17 times 4 is 68, and 5 times 15 is 75. So that is my reduced terms. So it's a 68 out of 75 chance that she'll pass her test, given that she studied. And of course, you can change that to a percentage if you wanted to, but we'll leave it in fraction form here. So that is how you do the conditional probability when you're given uh, just the simple probabilities you don't have all the data to work with. You use the formula up there in red.